بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. In the name of God Almighty. فخامة السيدة أرسولا فوندرلين. رئيسة الفوضية الأوروبية. فخامة السيد ألكسندر ديكرور. رئيس وزراء مملكة بلجيكا. رئيس الدورة الحالية للاتحاد الأوروبي. فخامة السيد نيكوس خريستو دوليدس. رئيس جمهورية قبرص. فخامة السيد كرياكوس ميتسوتاكيس. رئيس وزراء الجمهورية اليونانية. فخامة السيد كارن هايمر مستشار النمسا فخامة السيدة جورجيا ميلوني رئيسة وزراء الجمهورية الإيطالية السيدات والسادة اسمحوا لي في البداية أن أرحب بكم ضيوفا أعزاء على مصر حيث تأتي زيارتكم للقاهرة اليوم وسط زخم مكثف تشهده العلاقات المصرية الأوروبية سواء مع مؤسسات الاتحاد الأوروبي أو دوليه الأعضاء لقد مثلت زيارتكم اليوم مرحلة شديدة الأهمية في العلاقات بين مصر والاتحاد الأوروبي إذ نجحنا معا في تحقيق نقلة نوعية في شراكتنا حيث قمت منذ قليل بالتوقيع مع السيدة أرسولا فوندرلاين رئيسة المفوضية الأوروبية على وثيقة إعلان سياسي مشترك لإطلاق مسار ترفيع العلاقات بين مصر والاتحاد الأوروبي إلى مستوى الشراكة الاستراتيجية الشاملة بهدف الارتقاء بمستوى التعاون من أجل تحقيق المصالح المشتركة السادات والسادة لقد اقترن مسار ترفيع العلاقات بين مصر والاتحاد الأوروبي بحزمة مالية لدعم الاقتصاد المصري وتتكون هذه الحزمة التي تبلغ حوالي 7.4 مليار يورو من ثلاثة مكونات رئيسية تتمثل في التمويل الميسر وضمانات الاستثمار والدعم الفني لتنفيذ مشروعات التعاون الثنائي. اتفقنا ايضا مع السيده رئيسه المفوضيه الاوروبيه على عقد مؤتمر للاستثمار بين مصر والاتحاد الاوروبي خلال النصف الثاني من العام الجاري للتعريف بالفرص والامكانيات الاستثماريه في مصر وبما يسهم في تعزيز الخيرات الشركات الاوروبيه في السوق المصريه. كما شهدت مباحثاتنا اليوم تركيزا خاصا على تعزيز التعاون في مجال الطاقه سواء فيما يتعلق بمجال, بمجال الغاز الطبيعي او الربط الكهربائي حيث اتفقنا على التعاون في مجال انتاج الهيدروجين الاخضر كمصدر للطاقه النظيفه واكدنا مواصله التعاون القائم في اطار منتدى غاز شرق المتوسط لما يساهم به في تحقيق أمن الطاقة على مستويين الإقليمي والدولي السيدات والسادة قد تناولت المباحثات أهمية الاستمرار في مواجهة التحديات المشتركة وفي مقدمتها الهجرة غير الشرعية حيث أكدنا التزامنا بمكافحة هذه الظاهرة في إطار التعاون القائم مع تضمين البعد التنموي في معالجتها إضافة إلى تعزيز مسارات الهجرة النظامية واتفقنا على رد دعم جهود مصر التي نجحت في وقف تدفقات الهجرة غير الشرعية من السواحل المصرية منذ عام 2016 فضلا عن استضافة 9 ملايين أجنبي في مصر يتمتعون بالخدمات الاجتماعية والصحية بسوق المواطنين المصريين الحضور الكريم لقد حزت الملفات الإقليمية والدولية ذات الاهتمام المشترك باهتمام كبير في محادثة في محادثة اليوم. وعلى رأسها القضية الفلسطينية والحرب في غزة حيث أكدت حكمية الوقف الفوري لإطلاق النار وإنهاء إسرائيل لأعمالها العدائية ودعوت في هذا الإطار القادة الأوروبيين لبذل المزيد من الجهد لوقف إطلاق النار بشكل فوري وغير مشروط فضلا عن زيادة المساعدات الإنسانية إلى قطاع غزة وتخفيف حدة الكارثة الإنسانية التي يعيشها الفلسطينيين اتفقنا أيضا والقادة الأوروبيين على رفض شن إسرائيل عملية عسكرية في رفح بما سيضعف من الكارثة الإنسانية التي يعاني منها المدنيين القطاع فضلا عن أثار تلك العملية على تصفية القضية الفلسطينية وهو ما ترفضه مصر جملة وتفصيلا وتأكد مصر مجددا رفضها الكامل لأي محاولات من قبل إسرائيل لتهجير الشعب الفلسطيني قصريا من أرضية المحتلة منذ عام 67 بما فيها قطاع غزة والضفة الغربية للقدس الشريف 
قد استعرضت باستفادة الجهود المصرية الرامية لحل الأزمة مع تأكيد أهمية التعامل مع القضية الفلسطينية بمنظور شامل ومتكامل يضمن حقوق الفلسطينيين بإقامة دولتهم المستقلة على حدود عام 1967 وعاصمة أود أن أختتم كلمتي بتأكيد ضرورة توحيد رسالتنا للمجتمع الدولي لإبراز أن معاناة الشعب الفلسطيني بكامل الأرض الفلسطينية المحتلة على مدار العقود الماضية لن تتوقف سبب الاعتراف بدولة فلسطين ومنحال عضوية كاملة من الأمم المتحدة والعمل على تنفيذ حل الدولتين وفقا للمنعات الدولية وأن التسويق في حل تلك القضية State solution in line with the international references, the procrastination with the resolving discourse, not only the difference as the region, but the entire globe. In stability, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you and you as guests to Egypt. I thank you for our today's fruitful talks. I look forward for continuing our constructive dialogue and our constant coordination. Thank you so much. Allow me to invite Mrs. President of the European Commission to take the floor. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mr. President, for your warm welcome and your hospitality. I'm very glad to be back in Cairo. The partnership between the European Union and Egypt is of critical importance. The presence of six European leaders today shows how deeply we value our relationship. We share strategic interests in stability and prosperity. And given your political and economic weight, as well as your strategic location in a very troubled neighborhood, the importance of our relations will only increase over time. Today's visit and strong representation by European leaders reflects the strength of our bilateral ties. And today marks a historic milestone with the signature of our joint declaration for a strategic and comprehensive partnership. It is a partnership based on six main pillars, six areas of mutual interest for Europe and Egypt. And I'm pleased to announce that this will be supported by a new financial and investment package of 7.4 billion euros for the coming four years. This package has six pillars. The first one is that we will intensify our political dialogue. And together we will also work on our commitment to promote democracy and human rights. And to do this, we will hold a leaders' summit once every two years that comes on top of our annual association council. The second pillar is economic stability. We will support financially your reform efforts together with international partners. The third pillar is on investment and trade. We have already our economic and investment plan in place, but we can do much more. Be it renewable energy, be it digitalization or connectivity, be it the agriculture sector or the water management, just to name a few topics. And to this end, we will support the EU-Egypt Investment Conference in Cairo later this year. And in this context, let me, let me say a few words on energy investments. We are developing the Greggy Electric Interconnector Project together. This connects Egypt to Greece and increases, of course, the energy security in Europe. Egypt has all the resources to become a renewables hub, in particular when it comes to renewable hydrogen. You are keen to attract foreign investments, and we have investors interested in Egypt, and we have a memorandum of understanding on, uh, standing on this. So let us press ahead with the work in this area, and let's get very concrete. The fourth pillar is migration and mobility. We already have a very good cooperation, and this is needed more than ever. This is why we will invest at least 200 million euros from today's package to make our cooperation even more effective. We will carry on with our work to facilitate legal migration, for example, the talent partnerships, 
and in parallel we will continue to count on Egypt's full dedication to control illegal migration from border management to anti-smuggling and return. The fifth pillar is on security and law enforcement. We have an established cooperation in counterterrorism, and we will reinforce it. The last pillar <clears throat> is in many ways the most important one. It is about people, it is about their skills, and it is about research. Exchanges of students under the Erasmus Plus program are already thriving. Egypt can now negotiate its accession to other EU programs, for example, Creative Europe or Horizon Europe. And all this will deepen the bonds between our people on both sides of the Mediterranean. Of course, these discussions are taking place in a time of deep crisis. We are all extremely concerned about the war in Gaza and the unfolding catastrophic humanitarian situation. Gaza is facing famine, and we cannot accept this. It is critical to achieve an agreement on a ceasefire rapidly now that frees the hostages and allows more humanitarian aid to reach Gaza. I commend you for your personal efforts, Mr. President, to broker such a ceasefire. And we are also very concerned about the risks a full-scale offensive in Rafah would have on the vulnerable civilian population. This needs to be avoided at all costs. I would also like to thank Egypt for its extraordinary efforts to ensure that humanitarian supplies can reach Gaza. The European Union is doing everything in its power to provide it much-needed assistance we know that today Gaza needs 500 trucks per day, or the equivalent, by land, by air, or by sea. And this year alone, the European Union will provide 275 million euros in assistance to Palestinians. We have delivered over 1,800 tons of aid, including medical equipment to Egypt, and we are making sure this aid can reach Gaza through all possible routes, and this includes also our newly opened maritime corridor in Cyprus. Mr. President, current events confirm once again the vital role that Egypt plays in the stability and security of the region. And these challenging times have shown the value and the strength of our bilateral cooperation and relationship. It is therefore only natural for us to intensify our partnership. We have a mutual interest to do so. So thank you very much. Again, Mr. President, I'm looking forward to this new chapter in our relationship. Thank you. Thank you, um, Mr. President, and thank you for, uh, for hosting this very important summit between the European Union and, uh, and Egypt. Um, in the state of the world of today, it is crucial to have, uh, to have partners and to have partners who cooperate. Today's strategic partnership will make us stronger, and this partnership will deliver. It will deliver on more investment. It will de deliver on creation of more jobs. It will deliver on creating more cooperation between Egypt and the European Union, and it will deliver on stemming irregular migration. The strategic partnership is to the benefit of Egypt and of the European Union, especially in these times, times when we have a war on the European continent, when we have a horrendous conflict in Gaza, and when we see the impact, for example, on the trade going through the Red Sea. The reforms that are in this, uh, in this agreement will improve the investment climate. It will strengthen Egypt's economy. It will create business opportunities, which create more opportunities, especially for a young generation. In addition to that, a vibrant civic space, a vibrant democracy will add even more perspective to a young generation. 
Egypt plays an important role in fighting human trafficking and in fighting the smugglers' network. The EU will assist Egypt in coping with this challenge and working together to fight the root causes of irregular migration. As being said, this meeting was also a meeting where we talked extensively on the situation in Gaza. Egypt uh, has been a partner and, and will continue to be a partner in trying to establish an immediate ceasefire and an immediate release of the hostages. The current situation in Gaza is unacceptable. Too many civilian lives have been lost. There has been an ICG provisional ruling. That provisional ruling has demanded on Israel to increase the access for humanitarian aid. What we have seen in practice is the opposite. The access for humanitarian aid has decreased. It is the responsibility to make sure that sufficient humanitarian access is provided. More food, more water, more medicines are urgently needed. And especially in this month of Ramadan, everyone hopes that a ceasefire would be coming in this holy month and it would come into effect. The population of Gaza deserves to, leave, to live in peace. Dear Mr. President, I would thank you for this, uh, for this partnership. Thank also my colleagues for an important moment in our Belgian presidency to come to this, this agreement between Egypt and the European thank Union. Thank you. Thank you. Dear friend, President of the Arab Republic of Egypt, I'm delighted to join Ursula and my colleagues here in Cairo, and I would like to thank you for your warm hospitality as always. It is a great honor to be part of uh, such a historic day, a day that marks the launch of the strategic and comprehensive partnership between the European Union and the Arab Republic of Egypt. Thank you, Ursula, for leading the way and delivering this very important document. It is a day that stands for politi political commitment, cooperation, and leadership. Cyprus is not only the closest geographically member state of the European Union to Egypt. Cyprus and Egypt share a deep historic friendship that in recent years has become a true and deep strategic partnership anchored on solid foundations of true friendship. Fully cognizant of the critical role of Egypt as a pillar of stability in the region, Cyprus has long advocated for the development of a strategic partnership between the European Union and Egypt. And today, we are proud that we are witnessing its fruition. The joint declaration, signed a few moments ago, marks the beginning of a new era in European Union-Egypt relations. The broad scope and the strategic nature of the wide-ranging sectors identified in the declaration fully reflect Egypt's indispensable role in Europe's southeastern flag. Today, we take a substantial step towards making each other stronger in addressing common challenges and in harnessing the potential in our partnership which is limitless and awaits to be further enhanced. Dear friends, with Egypt, we also share a common vision for a peaceful Eastern Mediterranean and Middle East. It is a vision <coughs> President Sisi has been a key architect in consulting and implementing, demonstrating true leadership. Egypt plays a critical role in addressing numerous crises from Libya to Sudan, Palestine, and the Red Sea. Specifically in Gaza, Egypt and President Sisi has been exerting tremendous efforts to achieve a ceasefire, to prevent the conflict from spreading, to bring lasting peace, and to provide much needed humanitarian relief for the civilians in Gaza. I want once again to publicly thank President Sisi for his country's tireless efforts in this respect. In the same context, I also want to underline yet again that the displacement of Gazans is unacceptable and it also compromises the national security of neighboring countries. Dear friends, we all agree that it is crucial that we deliver more aid to Gaza. 
To this end, since the start of the war, Cyprus has worked on providing supplementary options to the international community for the delivery of aid. Last week, Cyprus, joined by a number of partners, including the European Union, always under the leadership of Ursula, has established a safe humanitarian maritime corridor. I want to stress once again that this effort is of purely humanitarian nature and complementary to the existing routes and mechanisms already in place. In concluding, I wish to stress that Cyprus will continue working with its partners in the European Union to see this strategic partnership flourish, particularly with the objective of ensuring peace and stability, but also economic prosperity in the Mediterranean, the Middle East, the Red Sea, and the Horn of Africa. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President, uh, Madam President, uh, dear colleagues. Uh, uh, for those of us, uh, um, as uh, President Christodoulidis uh, pointed out, that have been advocating for a long time uh, a stronger and closer partnership between the European Union and Egypt, today is indeed a very, very special moment. Uh, the uh, implementation of the comprehensive and strategic uh, partnership uh, with uh, Egypt sets clear goals in terms of strengthening the relationship between the European Union and uh, Egypt uh, and uh, recognizes a very simple fact that the stability and prosperity of Egypt is of critical importance to the European Union. And Greece will continue as it has been um, uh, to be a steadfast supporter of Egypt's relations uh, with the European Union and to recognize uh, the crucial role Egypt is called upon to play on numerous areas of common interest. This strategic partnership uh, is signed uh, uh, in a time of great upheaval uh, in the Middle East. And the topic was extensively discussed in our meetings, and we're all gravely concerned uh, about the situation uh, in Gaza, especially ahead of a possible ground invasion in Rafa, which, as the President of the Commission said, must be avoided at all costs. Uh, the humanitarian situation in Gaza is simply unacceptable. The situation demands uh, an immediate ceasefire, uh, the release of all hostages, and the opening of all avenues for humanitarian aid to alleviate the suffering of the innocent people of Gaza. And Egypt uh, has a major role to play, and uh, we are grateful uh, for um, uh, your responsible stance and efforts, uh, Mr. President. Facing this crisis, uh, whose uh, consequences affect your country uh, directly, and it is of paramount importance uh, for the international community to act jointly to prevent a further destabilization of the wider region, and Greece, uh, from its end, stands ready uh, to, contribute, to contribute to any effort that uh, will lead towards achieving regional stability. In that spirit, uh, our country has assumed uh, a leading role in the defensive EU operation Aspidas in the Red Sea, uh, with the aim of safeguarding freedom of navigation and protecting human life, an issue which is particularly important also um, uh, for uh, Egypt uh, uh, and the revenues uh, it gets from the Suez uh, Canal. And the collective EU effort, uh, with the support of regional stakeholders such as Egypt, uh, can, tr can contribute to a secure environment uh, in that strategic maritime um, uh, area. And we've also uh, supported uh, the launch of the Cypriot Initiative for a maritime corridor uh, as a complementary humanitarian route to that of the Rafa crossing. We've also had an opportunity to discuss uh, issues related uh, to migration uh, in light of the current uh, geopolitical challenges in the Middle East uh, and North Africa. And uh, we commend Egypt uh, uh, and its efforts uh, in preventing flows from reaching the Mediterranean route by hosting a huge number of migrants and curbing uh, the illegal trafficking um, routes uh, 
and we've discussed that we must prevent uh, the opening of new uh, routes and we will work very closely with Egypt to ensure that this goal will be achieved and we will also work very closely with Egypt to ensure that uh, um, we open up legal pathways um, uh, to uh, migration in order to offer more young Egyptians an opportunity to travel to Europe legally rather than possibly um, risking their lives uh, on very treacherous journeys. Finally, we touched upon uh, the future of our cooperation in energy, which bears great potential for both sides. Uh, um, Egypt has the potential of becoming a powerhouse regarding the production of electricity from the wind uh, and, uh, and the sun, and we reaffirmed our commitment to continue to advance projects such as the Greki uh, interconnection between Egypt uh, uh, and, uh, and Greece, uh, which has recently been recognized as a project of uh, mutual interest by the European Union. In closing, let me thank you again, uh, President Sisi, for hosting today's historical meeting. And let me reiterate again that uh, the European Union stands ready to stand by uh, and assist uh, uh, Egypt uh, uh, in its uh, biggest challenges. Thank you. Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear Mr. President, dear Madam President, dear colleagues, I am delighted about today's visit here in Cairo, as it allowed us to continue our discussions from when I visited President al-Sisi in April 2023. And especially because today the partnership between the EU and Egypt is being taken to a new level. Thank you, Mr. President, for your hospitality and today's fruitful, trustful, constructive and open discussions. We started talks on a partnership that is beneficial for both sides already last during my visit here in Cairo. The comprehensive Egypt agreement is an important step for Europe's security. Thank you to President von der Leyen for her leadership on this issue. Thank you very much. And um, in this agreement, there are many important areas in the, uh, which should be mentioned, from the economy and energy, such as green, hydrogen, to cooperation between our nations in education and science, to migration. We see great potential for close cooperation with Egypt in the field of green, hydrogen, we already discussed this last year, as well as in the area of the shortage of skilled labor in Europe. In Egypt, the population is growing every year, whereas population growth in most European countries is declining. Qualified workers from Egypt can therefore make an important contribution in Europe. As Austria is particularly affected by this, I would like to say a few words on the topic of migration and thank you, President Assisi, for Egypt's efforts in hosting millions of refugees for his efforts in the fight against illegal migration. The fight against irregular migration is top priority for us. I am convinced that we as you must to do everything we can to prevent illegal migration. In order to combat the root causes, we need sustainable cooperation. The support foreseen in the agreement for Egypt as a host country for a large number of refugees is effective, significant, and important. And it's important for everyone, for the people who live here, for Egypt, and for the EU. Security is not a one-way street. Security needs cooperation, needs partners. This is also the case in the fight against terror, another really important aspect of the agreement. Because terror is the enemy of the people, it steers up fear and hatred, seeks to unsettle people and destroy societies. We must therefore oppose all forms of terrorism with all our strengths. The fight against terror is more relevant than ever. Egypt is also a key partner of the EU in this respect. I'm very pleased that we have reached such a comprehensive agreement and that Austria was able to make a small contribution. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, dear Ursula and dear colleagues. Thank you. Seda, Reis of the Royal Government of Italy, please. Thank you very much. Well, I fully agree with the words expressed by my colleagues and by Ursula von der Leyen, the President of the Commission, whom I want to thank for the 
work that she's been doing. Uh, we have achieved a very important goal today. President Sisi, thank you very much also for your hospitality. But I think that being here all together to sign this declaration means something very important. And it is the result of an intense and effective uh, diplomatic work that all of us have engaged in over the past months. The joint declaration that Egypt and the European Union have adopted today is an important step towards the development of a true partnership able to address in an integrated manner all of the complex challenges of our times, from the regional ones, the development, and also illegal migration. And uh, I want to take also this opportunity once again to express my appreciation for the diplomatic efforts that President Sisi is pursuing together with the United States, with Qatar, moreover, in order to achieve a prolonged pause in hostilities in Gaza leading to the release of the hostages and to a sustainable ceasefire. But it is also, I'm telling that also to say that I'm proud uh, to announce that uh, a memorandum of understanding with the Egyptian Ministry of Health uh, was adopted today to strengthen bilateral co collaboration in humanitarian assistance to one, uh, wounded civilians arriving from Gaza. It is one additional piece uh, of the wide-ranging humanitarian efforts that Italy has been putting in place since the outbreak of the conflict. We must uh, continue to work hard to achieve a memorandum of understanding able to lay the foundation for a new, I would say, historic page of our, of our relations, uh, deepening our political dialogue, working together for our respective economies. And uh, as all my colleagues said before me, it is also the best way to face the problem of the illegal migration to fight human traffickers. The best way is to reaffirm the rights of the citizens in the African continent not to emigrate towards Europe. And it is something that we can do on, only with development. And it is exactly what we are doing today. Uh, I want to express a note of satisfaction for uh, the role that Italy played in this new model of cooperation between Europe and the southern shore of the Mediterranean, which has become a model that we already started with the, the Memorandum of Understanding in Tunisia. It is working. Uh, within this European framework, as you know, uh, Italy has also acted in a concrete manner through the Matei Plan for Africa. Egypt is one of the countries identified in the plan, the priority countries, and it couldn't have been otherwise. That's why I'm also uh, proud that the, during the course of this visit, we adopted more than 10 memoranda, uh, ranging from sustainable agriculture to financial support for small and medium-sized enterprises to infrastructural, uh, um, infrastructural development and health. So I'm very satisfied with this important day and I warmly want to thank Ursula, my colleagues, and President Sisi.